Hello, my name is Mahendra and you're watching ePlanet and this is the second part of Ode on a Grisha Nun. A happy, happy bow that cannot shed your leaves nor ever bid the spring adieu. So now the scene has been changed and John Chris is talking about the bow. Bow means branch. So the bow is happy. Now John Kitts has personified the bow that cannot shed your leaves. So now he is addressing to the bow and saying that this branch will never lose the leaves because it is it is a drawing. It is engraved on the Krishnan. So not ever bid the spring at you. So because it is it will be forever young, so it will never lose, it will never give the farewell at you means farewell to the spring. And happy melodies unaware forever piping song forever new so now his his scene again is changing and he's talking to the melodist the composer the musician he will always be unwary always be uh, he will never feel exhausted so he will always sing the song and the song will be forever new more happy love more happy love happy love so now john kirst indicates to the love that is happy again personify uh, forever warm and still to be enjoyed so this love is forever warm and although many decades has been passed this love can can still be enjoyed forever panting this love is forever panting means passionate and forever young and still the love is young all breathing human passion far above and now john kids is comparing this eternal love to the breathing human person okay one more thing i would tell you that forever warm and forever panting because the forever forever has been used at the beginning of these lines so here the figure of speech is anaphora okay so now john kids is comparing the eternal love to the breathing human person human love so it is a metaphorical comparison between these two loves and all breathing human person far above above so now this human person is far above than this eternal love engraved on the krishnan so that leaves a heart high sorrowful and cloyed and now john gates is saying that the human person human humanistic love leaves the heart with the high sorrowful if you will not get your love it will be a condition where you feel sorrowful and if you will get the love you will feel the condition cloyed excessive sweetness and because it will be temporary so you will again feel the sorrowful life a burning forehead and it will give the, give you the distress and a parching tongue parching tongue means dryness which gives the which leads to the desire so it is the explanation of this stanza so now stanza 4 who are these coming to the sacrifice to what green altar o mysterious priest so now john kirs is talking about the group of people they are coming to the sacrifice to a place called green altar and the place has not been depicted on the grishanan and among them there is a mysterious priest also ladies thou that hyper lowing at the skies and with them there is a hyper there is a cow hyper means cow and the cow is lowing cow is creating the deep sound maybe she is crying gazing at the sky and all her silken flanks with garland dressed and the cow's silken flanks the side the flank means the side of the cow is silken and decorated with the garland garland means the circle of the flower so the cow's side has been decorated with the garland what little town by river or sea shore or mountain built with peaceful citadel is emptied of this folk this pious mon so now john kirts is in a very contemplative thought or having an idea that because these people this fox are here in this pious ceremony so what little town is totally emptied and where is this little town whether this little town is in by the river or any seashore or any mountain built with peaceful citadel and whether this mountain is on the mount where this uh, town is on the mountain that is full with peaceful citadel and little town thy streets forevermore will silent be so now he is talking with this town and saying that now thy streets will be forever silent so here he is using personification because the street will be silent and not a soul to tell why thou art thou art desolate can ever return so now 
he is saying that there will be no soul there will be no human being to tell that why your streets are silent why are you desolate and because no one will return no one will return everybody has stuck on the creation on oh attic sheep fair attitude with breed of marble man and maidens overwrought with forest branches and the trodden weed so now poet addresses the gracious urn describing it as an attic and talking about its beauty fair attitude means the beautiful thing with breed breed means the gracious urn is decorated so the gracious urn is decorated therefore it looks beautiful of marble man and maidens overwrought so now you can see alliteration here the repetition of m marble man maidens overwrought so maybe this gracious urn is overwrought due to the due to the numbers of men and maidens or maybe because is a there's a detailed explanation of the things so therefore it is overwrought with forest branches and the trodden weed so now john kits talks about the amalgamations of the nature and the humanistic approach because trodden weeds because all the people are just roaming around the bushes or roaming around the forest so the leaves are trodden this is something humanistic approach here and forest branches means the nature thou silent form thou stees us out of thought as doth eternity gold pastoral so now again john kits talked with the grishanan and saying that you have depicted the pastoral things you are cold but we are you know by because we are gazing at you and you are silent so we you are just giving us idea that is leading us to the eternity it giving us uh, it gives us thought and leading us to the eternity when old age shall this generation wished thou shalt remain in midst of other who then ours a friend to man to whom thou says so now john kirsch is saying that when our race will be old when we will be old and we will die we will pass away because john kirsch has the idea that uh, he will he will pass away soon so he's saying that when our race will be old and our age will everybody will pass so then you will be there then you will be there among the other generation among the future generation and who means the problems so among the problems of the future generations you will talk with them as a friend and you will call them what what the grishanan will tell them that beauty is truth truth beauty that is all so now the grishanan will say that beauty is truth that what is beauty beauty is truth truth beauty as you already know that satyam shivam sundaram so now john kirsch has also implied this thing that beauty is truth and truth is beauty that is all and now john kirsch has used this hyphen deliberately by because he wanted to focus on this line beauty is truth truth is truth is beauty so now what john kirsch indicates said that if you know the beauty if you know the eternal beauty if you know the internal beauty you know the truth if you know the truth you know the beauty ye know on earth and all you need to know so john kirsch is saying that this is what you need to know you need to know because you are on earth so you know this this one single line that beauty is truth truth beauty